So welcome everybody. I'm Alice Creswell and today I'm here with James Aladaran from Manchester in the UK, just down the road from us. So uh, welcome James, good to have you on here. Thank you for having me, it's great to be with you and welcome to everyone tuning in. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, I think we first met at a wedding, is that right? Oh yeah, that's our friend uh, Ruben's wedding uh, some years yeah. ago now. Oh, yeah, wow. a, good few, a good few years ago, we were, uh, me and Rob were, were at the wedding and we sat next to you and your wife, Rebecca. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's when we first met you. And we just heard more and more about you over the years. And uh, so what I wanted to do was just chat to you today, James, and just um, ask you some questions about what's what you believe is happening in the UK right now, what's happening spiritually. Think what you know, what you've been up to since we first met all that the Lord's been doing with you. And, um, you know, we've got our, we've got an event coming up in two weeks. In fact, it's two weeks today that our event starts in Manchester. <laughs> yeah. And um, which has come around really fast now, but you're going to be there and Rebecca's going to be there leading worship right. and prayer storm, your ministry with a prayer storm band. So yeah. we're really excited to see yeah. what's going to happen there. And I thought it'd be great for the people just to get to know you a little bit that uh, maybe follow me, but they don't know anything about you yet. So, um, or maybe they've heard a lot about you already and uh, don't know me very much. <laughs> so, um, I know that Lou Engel, who, who I know a little bit, met him and uh, he's in the States, isn't he? With a pretty amazing prayer and fasting ministry yeah, yeah. over there. And um, I saw him on a video talking about you and he called you a firebrand. <laughs> which I think is probably true. Um, and he said, you're a firebrand of revival and you know, you're moving history in the nation and you're lighting fires. And it's so good to have somebody like you in the nation of the UK. Mm. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, really good to connect with you more and to have you at our event. We're really excited for that coming up. Also, um, Karen Wheaton, who many of you watching may know Karen Wheaton from The Ramp. And uh, there's a video of Karen as well talking about James and just, you know, that she, I, th I think she mentions the fact that you're like a spiritual son to her. Yeah, that's and right. She's my spiritual mom. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> Lou as well, my spiritual father. Spiritual father. Like, the two of them combine. If, if I try to explain to people that don't know anything about what I do, I like I ask them, do, have you heard of Lou Ingle? Have you heard of Karen Wheaton? If you understand those two ministries, then you probably get an idea of, Kind of what I'm like. Yeah, so you're a, a mixture. <laughs> so it's like yeah. a spiritual mother is Karen Wheaton and your spiritual father's Lou Engel, and the two together, <laughs> spiritual seed, <laughs> is James and Rebecca in Prayer Storm. And yeah. uh, that's a really good combo right there, isn't it? That sounds great. Very, um, yeah, fiery, I would say. So, um, yeah, I know that in the, the video I watched of Karen Wheaton she was saying she was talking about you and about Manchester and really the fact that when she came to Manchester I think it may be the first time but she really connected with the city and really holds I think I wrote it down somewhere that she said she left a part of her heart in Manchester is what she says and she's been praying ever since the few good few years ago she said my heart was gripped by Manchester and she's been praying for a work of God to take place in the UK since she was first in Manchester and uh, yeah she must be thrilled to have you as a spiritual son based in Manchester and all that you're doing right now so why don't you just tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you're doing yeah well uh, so good to be on here with you and uh, I, again I want to thank you and Rob uh, Alice and Rob thank you for having me on here and uh, yes we are based like you said here in Manchester the the ministry we lead my wife and I uh, it's called Prayer Storm, and so it started in 2009. Just a bit of a backstory. My parents are missionaries, so I see myself as a missionary here. My dad is from Nigeria. My mom is from Ghana. I was born in Liberia, and my wife is from Stockport. <laughs> wow. <I live> in Manchester. 
Manchester. So, so there you go. Uh, and, you know, my heart is for the United Kingdom. My heart is for the people of this land and for a move of God, like we've read about from years ago, but greater than that. Because we don't just want what happened in 1904. We want something way greater. In fact, we promised something way greater than that because it says the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. So we're expecting more, but we haven't seen it yet. And I believe we're in the beginning to, uh, uh, times for, for that explosion of God. Uh, but yeah, so we came here as missionaries in 2001. And uh, long story short, Prayer Storm started in 2009, and then 2014 we became a charity here in the UK. And so our heart is to be a catalyst for prayer and revival. Sometimes I describe myself as that annoying alarm clock that wakes you up at four in the morning when you know you don't want to wake up at four in the morning, but you know you need to be awake at four in the morning because you have something important to do that day. You know, when that alarm starts to sound, you're like, oh no, just leave me alone, I want to sleep. Our ministry can be like that. It's like a waking up, calling, uh, stirring, shaking, equipping in prayer and intercession and fasting for revival, for awakening and holiness and all that stuff. And so uh, we've been doing this for many years and seeing God move incredibly, especially with the youth. He's really placed the youth, teenagers, young adults on our hearts. So a lot of our ministry has been around that. And we want to continue to invest in reaching that. But also, obviously, we connect with the older generation as well. Uh, we're a multi-generational movement. We're not a local church, we're a ministry. And so we, my wife and I are part of a local church here in Manchester. You talk about the ramp, Karen Wheaton, you know, spiritual mom. The ramp has actually uh, got a church here in Manchester as well. So my wife and I are part of that. Uh, 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 the leaders, uh, Joe and Stacey Teresa, they're great friends of ours as well, but we very much serve, serve them when we're not out traveling, ministering, and all the things that, that we tend to do. So I hope that gives you a bit of a backstory. Our heart is worship, prayer, intercession, and so we host a lot of meetings, uh, prayer meetings, revival meetings, teaching, equipping meetings, all-night prayer meetings, middle-of-the-night prayer meetings. Sometimes we would do prayer schools that go from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. at night. <laughs> and wow. so we do all kinds of things like that. So we just want to raise up warriors, end-time warriors, to birth the move of God in the earth. Wow, that is so good. I love it. And you've been doing a lot online, I guess, over the last year or two. You know, yeah, since... like most people. <laughs> like yeah. we, so when lockdown started last year, just before lockdown started last year, you could just feel the fear. And uh, there was just so much going on in the atmosphere. It felt like there was a lot of fear that we were feeling anyway. So uh, my wife felt like we should host some time of worship and prayer. She didn't tell me, but she was thinking about it. And I was also feeling the same. And so we both had in our hearts to uh, host a time of just worship and prayer live online from our living room. And so um, I'm a bit of a techie video person and all that. So I was thinking, how do we make this work? How do I get her voice to sound nice with reverb and keyboard? So anyway, so it took me a while. We worked it out. And <laughs> so so it, it went amazingly well. The first night was, was not so good technically, but it got better and better. It, it's not about the technical. It was the fact that <laughs> our hearts, sorry, I'm getting distracted by technical things. Our hearts were really to just create a space for people to encounter God and for people to not get distracted by the news about COVID, to receive heavenly news and just press into the presence of God. And yeah. so we had no idea how long we we're going to do it for. We started and it was like night 10 and then by night 15 and then by night 20. Before we knew it, it was night 90. Wow. <laughs> like back to back every night. Yeah, yeah every months. night for night. Every <laughs> night for 90 nights, we had worship and wow. prayer. So it, it, it was pretty incredible. I don't know how we did it, but it was. <laughs> yeah, you got kids as well, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we just had a baby then as well. So, uh, yeah, that was one. There were times I'll be worshiping and, you know, Rebecca will hold the baby up and you can see that she'd pull through a nappy. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll just carry on playing on the keyboard and leading prayers. She will go off and change the baby and sometimes and come, come back. Sometimes. Again. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> well, that's life, isn't it? I mean, that's normal <laughs> life. <laughs> we're just normal yeah. people, aren't we? Us yeah. that go in front of the camera, you know, we just got a normal, we're normal, really. <laughs> normal lives going on behind the scenes, trying Absolutely. to get the camera working and everything. We're like that as well, you know? So, um, yeah, so because uh, I've seen a lot of stuff, you got a YouTube channel, haven't you? And uh, a website. What's your website called? It's prayerstorm.org, uh, and our YouTube channel is just prayerstorm TV. We do we do release lots of videos on worship and prayer. In fact, last week we just did like seven nights of praying in tongues at midnight. 
and we have we had lots and lots of people joining us so we just do these kind of things just to stir people and get them spiritually fit yeah and so yeah yeah so yeah do check that out you know if you want to press on tv that's good and you know you said you started up your ministry in 2009 which is the same year that we opened our cafe I know. and uh, i thought that was quite significant really you know we'd been going for a number of years before that but that was as soon as we opened our cafe in 2009 that's when the miracles really began to break out in earnest and haven't stopped you know when then we have the shop and the other things that we've been doing um and i i do believe there's some kind of synergy there and there's some i don't know it just really struck me when i realized that we'd started up something you know um pretty major ministry wise um yeah. in the same year and uh yeah, God's, God's up to something, isn't he? And not Absolutely. just in the UK, in the UK, obviously, but in other nations as well. So Absolutely. Can you, what, since you started in 2009, what can you see, has there been much change spiritually um, in the UK or other nations that you can, you can see? There's a lot that could be said about that. So I need to just decide on what I'm going to say, because a lot is happening in the world, obviously. But when you look at things from a spiritual perspective, we should be our interests as believers, because let me just take a sidetrack for a sec. Sometimes we get so distracted by the natural. We don't we don't choose to press into what is causing the natural things we see. And yeah. so we often get distracted by the headlines on the news. I am more concerned about heaven's headlines. And oftentimes that's very different to what you're hearing on BBC and Sky News or whatever you listen to. And so uh, uh, the the world has changed a lot since 2009. And at this point in time, things are very different in the spiritual environment we're in. So we need to be pressing into that. First of, when we started in 2009, prayer, I think, you know, there was prayer going on. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be the ones that do anything per se, but I've noticed an increased hunger the people of God to seek him and there's a shift going on where we're not just going to be crisis driven now oftentimes in the church the the types of prayer that go on again nothing wrong with this but it's often Christ is driven whereas God is looking for people that will be warriors and will take their stand in a place whether there's crisis or no crisis in the natural they're occupying that atmosphere with their prayers in the realm of the spirit and so we have seen the interest in prayer increase over the last I don't know, 12 years yeah, especially with the youth even with the with, with the adults there's been a stir in houses of prayer people finding that their hearts have been stirred to spend more time seeking God. That has been increasing, and that is really a move of God, really, because it takes God to love God. And so when people start to gather together, not for an agenda, not for a big name, but really just a fast to pray, to press into God, you know God is on the move. And I just feel there's a building up going on right now, and there's going to be a culmination of the explosion of the kingdom of God like we've never seen. You know, Jesus said the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in every nation, and then the end will come so that gospel of the kingdom cannot be preached without power <laughs> so we're in this place where there is a building up going on and prayer is a big part of that yeah yeah that's really good it's so true so god is on the move things are happening things are changing it's it's yes. i you know you saying things have changed since you started the, your ministry your movement in 2009 and i feel the same as well we've seen just such a hunger in people we do a lot with um people that don't know jesus you know and um but they're, they're really the, just the spiritual hunger is increasing dramatically and and over the last 18 months or whatever it's been since you know the start of covid last year um just real i mean there's been a lot of fear hasn't there and a lot of wondering what's happening and just so many people whose lives have been completely um, turned around and had some awful things happen in their families and, and with themselves personally, whether it's yeah. through being ill or losing loved ones or losing businesses or homes or whatever it might be. There's stuff going on now in the world. Obviously, we've got Afghanistan going. There's, there's just so many things mm -hmm. happening around the world and it, it's affected every single nation hasn't it it's not just like it's one usually you see things in the news and it's yeah. one nation here or there that goes through something but the time we're in now is just so unprecedented it's so like we could never have imagined it 
just 18 months ago, whatever it was, just over 18 months yeah. ago. And um, but people seem even even the ones where it's not been too bad for them, you know, um, everybody's been impacted and we're really sensing, you know, spiritually, but also the people we're talking to are so hungry. They're so yeah. like ready to to know God. They want yeah. to know God, even if they're not t- telling you that they really do. As soon as you start to talk to them, they really want to know God. And we're seeing what we do is we, you know, we've been training people and equipping them and um, activating people just, just to wherever they are, whatever they're doing every day to demonstrate God's love and, and his power. And whether that be mm-hmm. through healing, through miracles, through words of knowledge, prophecy, whatever it might be. And um, we're seeing more and more people wanting to get involved and wanting to, to step out in faith and to have a go and to see what God yeah. will do. So it's, it's such a t- incredible times that we live in. Um, and I, you know, I was thinking, it really the, is. and uh, so I think I've got a delay going on here as well. So <laughs> hopefully it's all, it comes oh, across. Really? All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I think yeah, we're doing, yeah, yeah. I think we're I doing all say, right. We're, 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 Absolutely. We live in incredible times because even as you were saying that, I was just thinking about how coronavirus has impacted the whole earth. And I do believe it is a picture of revival in the negative of what we expect him for God to do, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like waters cover the sea. And that just as every nation has been impacted by this, in the same way, the move of God that we are contending for before Jesus returns every nation will be impacted i mean prophets have spoken about a billion soul harvest and i believe we're yet to see that full manifestation uh even though it may seem dark right now the army is being prepared the the people are being prepared and hearts are being prepared you know like jesus says about the harvest field being ready and plentiful and the laborers being few it's like we're in that time where it's time for us to pray the lord the harvest to send forth the laborers yeah. because this is yeah. such a critical time for that move of god in the earth it really is and that's one of our major prayers really i pray all the time lord send your laborers and uh because that yeah the whole world is in su- such desperate need but the fields are white unto harvest they are there you can see <laughs> and um they're starting to come in you know we, we're gathering them in so and i was thinking you know about the the type of ministry the type of movement that we are and with what you do and you know just in the past we've seen you know thinking about um prayer warriors and intercessors spiritually you know praying against principalities and um powers that are of darkness and doing you know spiritual warfare and all the rest of it and trying to topple principalities and it, I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, Jesus said, didn't he, he talked about the person, but he said, if demons leave a person, it's like they're a house that's swept clean and they will go off and find their friends and come back many times. And if that person is not full of the spirit of Jesus, basically, and following Jesus, they, those demons can come back in if they're let in and mm-hmm. the person will be worse off. And I was thinking that's, I think that is similar to what happens in regions or maybe nations or cities where you have people going up against um, principalities and trying to topple them. Um, and then there's, it kind of leaves a vacuum. And what we see and what we have seen in the past is mm-hmm. that there's nobody to come in and there's nobody, you know, with little pockets extending the kingdom here and there, but not enough to fill that vacuum that's been left. And maybe the city or yeah. the region is worse off. But I think something's happening right now where we've got, guys like you and your movement and what you're doing, raising up an army who can intercede. And just the, the, it's like when you're praying, you are shaking stuff, you know, and things are toppling. You don't even have to go up against them, but they're toppling. Yeah, and there's, yeah, yeah. together with people all around the world that have been raised up to then go in as well in whatever sphere they're in, you know, and um, yeah. to extend the kingdom and, and, and demonstrate God's love and power and see see people and not just people but individuals but but cities towns villages states nations come into god and uh, i mean what Absolutely. do you think about that 
Yeah, I would say first off, in terms of even spiritual warfare, I, I mean, there's been a great increase in people understanding things about spiritual warfare. And sometimes within that, there is even more need for people to understand uh, the rules of engagement is what I'll call it. Because uh, sometimes people can start to pray in specific ways that they don't have a covering for and they open up themselves to things that they they would not have. It's like being under an umbrella. Once you step out of that umbrella of God's kind of jurisdiction where it's giving you a sphere in your prayer and your focus and you go out of that, you're open to all kinds of things. But in addition to that, what you've just said is critical because sometimes people pray for breakthrough but they don't think about what happens after the breakthrough. And <laughs> so it's all about just this yeah. big moment. So yeah. you have the Air Force. You see, this is why you have in the Army, you have different divisions in the Army. You have the yeah. Navy, you have the Air Force, you have the ground troops. You have the Air Force, and whoever has air supremacy has advantage, really, oftentimes in battle. So you have the Air Force, which would be like the special force intercessors, which often will have specific, unique type assignments in prayer. And so they have a role to play in breaking through territories. But it's not just about that. Them. So they have to play their part. And then you also need to have the ground troops who are then going to go in on the ground and occupy territory. So what often tends to happen is you have some people doing the Air Force stuff, but you don't have anyone on the ground. And so they could break through, but then the ground is left kind of bare. And guess what happens? Just like what you said and what Jesus says, the enemy comes and he takes ground and things are worse off there than they were originally, because that's the principle. And when you cast out the devil from a place, if that place is left unoccupied, things get worse there because the enemy goes and then he comes back with seven more worse demons, as Jesus says. And so mm -hmm. it's so critical that we're not just going after, let's just have breakthrough tonight in this meeting for the region. That's key. We have to raise up ground troop warriors that are going to be able to sustain prayer. Uh, uh, over a longer period of time, co the consistency of it is like they're, they're recalibrating the spiritual environment or as the uh, intercessors break through in the air, they kind of hold that breakthrough uh, in their prayers. The consistency of it kind of causes the ground that has been gained to not be lost. So it's so critical mm -hmm. that there is a working together of different ministries. And as you, you know, as you probably know this, that, you know, as you grow in ministry, you start to appreciate the diversity diversity in the body of Christ and how God has anointed different people to accomplish different things. And so the way this kind of uh, kingdom business works, for lack of a better way of putting it, is it, it's not a lone ranger. There's no one ministry that has it all. There's no one individual that has it all. It's like an interdependent movement of God in the earth. And so I realize we need people you know, who are walking and what you're walking in, uh, uh, Rob and Alice, you know, we need other parts of the move of God in the earth, and there has to be that diversity, and there has to be real unity, uh, and in the unity, it doesn't mean where there's, uh, this might sound confusing, in the unity, the unity is not uniformity, the unity means there is diversity of expression, but we are of the same spirit, but we can appreciate the uniqueness of our calling. And I believe this is one of the key things that's, uh, that's going to help us to sustain the move of God in the earth. That humility in realizing it's not just me, it's actually different people that God's bringing together for what he wants to do. And I'm part of them. And we need to raise up more people to be part of this because it's all about his kingdom. Yeah, that is so good. And I mean, I love that analogy of the, the, you know, the military, the different, the Air Force, the ground troops. I think that is just makes it so clear as to what's needed, you know, and mm. and it's really good for each person to find their own part that they play and to really get, you know, mm. um, it's time now, isn't it? We've got our marching orders. We need to be off and, and yeah. doing, be in the place that we're supposed to be. And uh, yeah, you were saying about, it's not one ministry, it's not one movement, it's all, you know, as the Lord says about, or the scripture says about different parts of the body, you know, we, we all yeah, play yeah, our different yeah. part and we need to know that you can't, we, just a hand would be no good, would it? We need every part of the body and um, that's individuals, but that's also movements, streams, denominations, whatever. Um, so yeah, that is, I love that, what you were saying. Um, so I was just thinking actually my, um, my dad years ago, it must be like 30 years ago or something, he actually was involved in Manchester, um, started up some kind of oh. some ministry and it was, um, yeah, helping in disadvantaged people in, in certain areas of Manchester and starting up 
um, stuff, getting them back into work and people getting saved and everything. I just just thought about that before, that it's, wow. it's really good that you're, you've, you're based in Manchester and all that you're doing. And um, so our event coming up is in Manchester. And we, we felt that, you know, we've not done an event in Manchester before. We normally would do our events in Chester. And this time we really mm -hmm. felt the Lord say Manchester. So we said, okay, we'll go for Manchester. Oh, wow. um, and we didn't exactly know why. And then we were like, Lord, who should we invite to come and lead worship and be part, you know, be special guests at our event? And you, you guys were the ones that just came up and we were like, that's who we need. Um, and it, it just seems really significant. And what you're talking about with the, the military and the different roles, it's, it's like the Lord really is connecting yeah. us together. And I mean, what time, you know, we, we planned this event for last year and obviously it had to be postponed, but the fact that it's coming yeah, this yeah. autumn, it's, I mean, it's in literally two weeks time, our event, it's um, the 2nd to the 4th of September in, at the Lighthouse Centre in Manchester. And uh, so we invite all of you to come join us. You know, the, the UK yes. is opening up. We've got restrictions have been lifted. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to wear face masks. We don't have to, you know, we can have as many people as we want at the event. And some of the um, many countries are opening up too. So we can have people come from different nations. Some you have to be vaccinated to come in without quarantine. Other nations you can come in without vaccine at all. You can come in and not have to quarantine. So, and we're right near the airport, aren't we? Manchester Airport's just down the road. Yeah, so we'd yeah. love you to yeah. join us. Um, but I do believe there's something significant about us, you know, your movement, our movement getting together and something for the first time, I believe something is going to happen. It's just such a timely event and, and bringing us together. I, I do believe something's going to ignite at this event. It's going to be really powerful. Absolutely. I do believe that when, when, when the people of God come together in humility with hunger for him and able yeah. to express their diversity in that place of seeking him with the different gifts that God has given us, uh, I, I, it's just like a recipe for revival and explosion of God, really. That humility, yeah. that hunger, that focus on going after him, I believe is so key. And so that's what we're about. So we're excited to connect with you and Rob and all the other yeah. people that are going to join in us here in Manchester for this incredible time yeah. uh, together. So it's going to be you so know, good. If you're still thinking about it, I'm not sure about it, do comment uh, definitely. Where can people register? So if you go to spiritlifestyle.com, and you go onto the, the website and it says events on there, click on events. There's a UK event coming up and then we've got one in the US as well in October. So find the event you want to attend, click through and you'll be able to see all the details of the event, the times, the days, um, the times for the sessions. We've got videos there of James and Rebecca as well and Prayer Storm Band. So you'll be able to watch some of the worship, hear Rebecca with her beautiful voice and her amazing songs, really powerful. And um, so we've got on the, the Thursday evening, on the 2nd of September, we're doing an open evening for anybody in the general, and general public. Anybody can come um, free of charge on the Thursday evening. It's like a miracle night and all the, obviously the worship band as well. Um, so bring your friends to that. And then we've got three sessions on the Friday, three sessions on the Saturday. We've got a water baptism service in the middle of that as well, because every time we do events we have people wanting to give their life to jesus and obviously we've got quite a few already who've just got saved recently through watching our videos and being part of our community online so um we'll, we'll be doing baptisms if you want to get baptized and on the saturday evening we're going to be doing a um like commissioning and launching everybody who's there into ministry i mean not necessarily full-time ministry but you know for really going for it um, and the rest of the, the time, we're going to be doing activations, practical, praying for each other, seeing miracles. Um, James obviously going to be there as well and praying and getting us, getting us interceding and preaching as well. Um, it's going to be so powerful. Can't wait. <laughs> so um, just before we yes. finish, go on. Oh. I was just going to say, it's so exciting to be able to meet people in person and not just stare at a camera, talk to oh, camera yeah. the day. You know, it's just... I know. It's been too anyway, long. Yeah, so... It's been too long. It's been like we've <laughs> yeah. had to do stuff online for ages now. And uh, I'm like, I get twitchy. I'm like, I want to be near people. I want to be praying for people and, you know, doing stuff. So uh, actually talking to people yeah. face to face is going to be 
so different. Um, I went to Germany just yeah. a few weeks ago. I was able to, to go to Germany because things were, you know, opening up. I had an amazing time over there. But it was just, that was the first time I'd actually spoken live, you know, to a real audience for like nearly two years. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow, wow. <laughs> but um, yeah, so with, in a, yeah, well, I'll get you to pray for people if that's okay, James, in a moment. Um, just, just before you do and before we wrap up, um, I just, you've got a book out, is that right? Is oh, I yeah, yes, I do have a book. It's my first book and it's called Life on Fire. And uh, in, in fact, just last night, I just I just posted it to my Instagram story. I had someone just send me a message saying, oh, James, I, thank you for writing this book. I just, I was reading your book and I got to this page. And as I was reading this page, a demon manifested and I got delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that sort of testimony before. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> That's, anyway, that's so amazing. yes, I am in the book. And that is, <laughs> that's so good. You know yeah. what? That's, so this I've person got delivered thing. of something. I, I've had the same thing happen with me. Oh, really? People, people are always like, demons manifest. Yeah, I had one woman who read one of my books. Somebody had given it to her. Some, and um, demons started manifesting. She'd been ill for like 10 years. Demons manifesting. She didn't wow. know Jesus. She didn't even know Jesus. But she's read. She thinks I better carry wow. on to see how to get rid of these demons. Tells them to go, and then she comes into the, our cafe and gets saved the next day. Wow. So um, I, I just think that's <laughs> we're going to see. We're going to see more of that. You know, that's yeah. you, your book is so powerful that you know people maybe not expecting to, but yes, demons will be leaving. People will be getting healed. People's thinking yeah. will change, and the whole lives will be transformed as they read the book you know as well as obviously learning stuff um yeah, yeah i think yeah. We, we need to expect that our books if we're if we're writing books inspired by the holy spirit we need to expect that the holy spirit through those words in those books and the impartation that mm. people will be transformed as soon as they even pick the book up even before amen. they start reading it so um amen that's absolutely right and i love so the it's called life on fire life on fire yes. yeah Yes. So where, where can people find that? Oh, you can find out on Amazon. Just type in Life on Fire, James and Ladder. Um, yeah, you can find that mostly on Amazon or on our website as well, prayerstorm.org. So prayerstorm.org. And you've got a Facebook yes. page, haven't you, for, for you and yes. Prayerstorm? And Prayerstorm, yes. Uh, if it helps, I'm the only one in the world with my name. So if you, <gasps> if you type my name right... Aladdin, if you think of Aladdin, Aladdin, I anyway, you can work it out. Yeah, well, <laughs> have it, a look. Then you, you, should you see find it. me very easy to. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to see it on the yes, on the post absolutely. right now. It should have it'll have James's name on, and uh, it might be on the screen as well, maybe. So, yeah, have a look for James, and do come and you know if you're coming to the event or if you maybe you haven't signed up yet. We've got a special offer on actually. So if for everybody who signs up online for our event, you can bring a friend with you. If you sign up for the whole event, you can bring a friend for free. We need to know who's coming. So you do need to let us know who's coming. We'll, we'll email you to find that out. And, um, and we've got one day passes available now as well. So go, go to spiritlifestyle.com for that. Go to prayerstorm.org for all the stuff about James and uh, come to the event. So, um, okay, if you want to, if you'd like to pray for us, that would be great, James. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Father, thank you so much for um, this opportunity for us to just talk about you. We're excited about what you're doing in the earth. Uh, Lord, I thank for everyone tuning into this broadcast live and those, that's got, those that are going to watch this later. I ask, Father, that what we're talking about, this spirit of fire, a spirit of prayer, awakening, that this would be a reality for anyone watching that's in a place of just boredom, distraction, bondage. Right now, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that there will be a fresh fire released over them and everything holding their mind, their hearts captive, be broken off even right now, Father. I thank you for renewing our love for you. You, our focus on you in the midst of all the chaos around us god we want to fix our eyes on you jesus so father i thank you for a renewal of heart and desire in seeking your face and lord i thank you for this conference coming up i thank you that even through this broadcast people would join us for a time of just pressing into your presence lord right here in manchester thank you for rob and alice thank you for all their spearheading father we honor them and we love what they're doing and father we thank you for what you're going to do right here in manchester god uh, we give you praise in jesus name amen oh man 
Thank you so much. Well, thank you, James, for, for joining me. And thank you, everybody else, for, for tuning in and watching us. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll be back on, I'll be back on Facebook Live again soon. It's funny because I did one yesterday and one today, and I haven't done one for ages. So it's like buses, you know, you kind oh, of, wow. <laughs> you're waiting for a bus to come, it takes ages, and then suddenly you get two at once. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, as, as far as I know, I'll be back on Facebook Live in a month's time with Rob. We're trying to do that once a month at least. And uh, But do, do come out and join us in Manchester um, on the 2nd to the 4th of September in two weeks' time. And we'd love to meet you and get to know you better. And uh, yeah, bless you guys. Thank you for joining. Bless you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.